and welcome back to MD Global Muscle here at the On The Rise Media Studio with me, your host, Giles Thomas. And yes, we do like to get all the new talent on. So we've got Diego Guerra all the way from Manhattan, New York. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm, I'm really good, mate. Um, now you're looking, you're so, you're correct. If, if I'm correct, you are right now in Manhattan, New York, because that's a pretty nice room you got there, mate. Where are you? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, do you mean in what, wh where I am? Yeah, where are you Where are you right now? Because, um, yeah, I'm just trying to work out where you are. Oh, I'm in my, uh, I have an apartment here in uh, 36th Street, mm -hmm. close to uh, Brooklyn. Okay. Uh-huh. Nice. So it's um. So the thing is, you you're living there and you're looking to get residency or a green card. Is it just 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 tell us? Oh yeah, yeah. I have been kind of stuck here like for two years, three, uh, like two and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, but finally, I'm working on it. So I can't go to compete out of the US. Oh shit. That, so that's the uh, that's a bad thing because you know if I could compete I I I should do it like next week or you know one week after I did New York Pro mm -hmm. something like that but now I have to wait uh, shows in inside you know USA uh, so yeah that's a bad thing I, I cannot go to another shows in uh, uh, other countries. Okay, so where are you from originally, mate? Colombia. I'm from Medellin, Colombia. Okay, so when did you move? Was it two years ago you moved to America? What was the main reason you wanted to move to America from Colombia? Well, honestly, I didn't plan it. <laughs> okay. I I remember the same week when the pandemic started. It was like just like a, one week before the pandemic. Oh, it was in the Arnold Classic, Ohio, yeah, 2020. I was, I was there. Yeah, I was there. So I get my pro car in 2020 in the Mr. Olympia South America. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in February, like uh, last week of February. Then after that was the Arnold Classic, Ohio, and I came just to see, you know, to, to watch the show. Yeah. So I went. When I was in Ohio, uh, the pandemic started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was I was just planning to stay for a couple months. Um. So after Arnold, Ohio, I went to uh, Nashville and then uh, New York. Um. Yeah, I stayed in New York for some months. Actually, the pandemic was uh, New York was the worst the worst city mm. uh, during the pandemic in that season i was the whole season i was here in, in manhattan yeah the pandemic was you know the worst here so colombia closed the borders so you couldn't go home yeah they, they closed the borders <laughs> for about seven eight eight months wow so i was um Shit. You know, allowed to stay here legally like six months uh -huh. with my type of visa. Um, so when I when I was already six months, uh, Colombia uh, were like the border was uh, you know were, were uh, uh, still closed. Yeah. So then I decided to stay. When I passed the time, I didn't want to go back to Colombia and take the risk. Yeah. You know, because, okay, it was the pandemic. It was an excuse, but then what happened if I, I wanted to come back to the U.S. and then they uh, didn't allow me to, to go in because I passed the time, you know, mm -hmm. that I was supposed to, to be here. Um, there, they were like... Uh, um, canceling a lot of visas so i don't know i was kind of scared you know of losing the chance to come in uh, you know in the united states again so <clears throat> i stay and i yeah that's it now i've been here like for three years and a half so where are you now in terms of 
like your 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 residency are you what are you waiting for now are you waiting for is it is it is it not your green card but your actual citizenship is that what you're waiting for now i don't have status like legal status now but yeah i in the process yeah i send some papers and uh we are actually working on it so it could take mm, months or one year, I don't, I don't know for now. But yeah, I'm working on it differently. So why are you not allowed to leave America? Because I mean, that so you can't. So I mean, like, 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 say the Toronto Pro next week. Could you go and do that, or is it? Are you, are you just no leave? for now. Uh, uh, till I, I get my residence. Yeah. I can't go out because <laughs> they, you know, I, I, I won't. They won't allow me to to go back here again yeah come back and then i can't you know i can't take the risk yeah yeah i can't i would like to go to toronto you know mm -hmm. or i don't know I, I i saw i i was uh checking the uh the calendar yeah shows and there was like a couple of shows very close but I cannot do that. Hmm. So, so I have to take more time to, you know, to prepare for other shows. Do you? Do you? I mean, have you had a chance to go back and see your family? Do you like your friends and your family back home in Colombia? Have you just? Is, do you miss them? Mm, yeah, I miss them. I haven't seen them in like yeah, in the, the whole time three three years and a half, Jeez. and I miss them so bad. Hmm. Well, I have a daughter. Okay. She she born here, mm -hmm. but she lives in Colombia. Right. So it's the only you know person that I see when her mom bring her brings her her mm. to visit me. Sometimes. How old is she? She is uh, three years and like two months. Wow. So how often do you get to see her then? How what? How often? How many times do you get to see her? Because oh, I mean, it, they when they're young, it's 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 a you want to see them a lot, you know. When they're this age, yeah, it was it's having hard time with that. But now I'm getting to see her more often. But they used to come like every three months. Yeah, but just for three days, you know, less than a week. So they come like two for every three months, and I don't see to you know I I can't like enjoy too much with my daughter. But now I we are trying to do it more often and more time, mm. so they stay more a little more. I feel for you on that one, mate. That must be hard. That must be tough. Oh, yeah, yeah, honestly, it's it's it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, last weekend you obviously had a very successful appearance at the New York Pro. Um, that was your pro debut. What was that like for you as an overall experience? You know, coming second to Kerith. So, what was that like? Walk us through it. What was the New York Pro like for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's happy. Uh, <laughs> he's buzzing. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of history about this competition because. I don't know. It, um, I, you know, as I told you before, I was planning to compete in the in New York Pro and just stop competing. Yeah, hang on. Just for the sake of the viewers, I, I was messaging Diego last week. I was walking around in the garden and you said, um, yeah, if I didn't do well, I was going to stop competing. And I thought you meant, and I said, what, for the season or for the year? And you said, no, if I didn't do well, I was never going to compete again. Yeah. Why? It was like, I was pretty sure like I wasn't going to compete again. Okay. I wanted to do a good, good show. Yeah. Honestly, I, I didn't prepare. Well, my preparation was, um, it was about 10 weeks. <laughs> okay. I yeah. was very off. You yeah. know, I was very off. And then I talked to Patrick. Patrick was the, the person that, he makes me pro. I get my pro card with him, but yep. it was like, you know, the 2020, two years. 
two years ago. Three years, yeah. Yeah, three. Uh, then we stopped uh, stopped working for some time. Um, yeah, we we back. You know, we talk a bit uh, again, and then I tell her, Patria, I wanna compete. She say, What should you uh, do? You wanna do? I say, I wanna do New York Pro. You say, but it's New York Pro is it's in about ten weeks, mm-hmm. and I was off. I was like using like I was like in you know TRT. Just relaxing, eating, <laughs> really, whatever. Yeah. You know? So he was like, uh, "Okay, send me update, and we decide." Ten weeks. So I send it, and he say, "We have to work really hard. <laughs> yeah, really hard. Really, want to get there mm-hmm. in ten weeks. Mm. But you have the body to do it. You can do it, Patrick." Uh, this is very, you know, important thing working with him because Patrick really knows my genetics. Mm-hmm. He knows my body. So he 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 knows what to do, you know, with me. Yeah. And then he say, okay, we have to work really hard and then say, okay, let's try. If I don't get ready, uh, we don't compete. So it was it was 10 weeks working like hard i never prepare before like i did for new york pro because honestly uh yeah uh, i when i was amateur i feel like uh it was easy Mm -hmm. i get my pro card in south america and i feel like it was uh very easy it was like 27 competitors in my division. Wow. And I feel like it was easy. And I never, <laughs> I never step on stage being 100% because that was part of the reason that I decided not to com- to to compete again after New York Pro. Yeah. Because I was trying to do a great preparation before, but I never could do it because I didn't have the mindset. I mean, when I was doing the diet, I was doing it. I, I, I always started to do it hundred percent. Yep. But when I get in that point where I was so tired and so hungry, my mind gets so uh, weak. Hmm. So I was like, Ugh, I'm trying hard, but I can't. So I, I, I started always cheating on my, my diet. How, so how, when I I mean, when, the, sorry, when you say cheating, I mean, how often were you cheating and how, what, I mean, was it like an extra rice cake or are we talking proper cheats? No, every shows I, I used to, uh, like, Two weeks before the show, oh, when I was so no, bad, no, no, it was like I I had to go out and shit. eat some hamburgers oh. or something like that. Oh my god! I so, so I say I honestly I I have to quit because I know I can do great. Yeah, because I knew it, but I knew I didn't have the the mind for that. Okay, and if you wanna be a bodybuilder. A professional and successful, you have to. Is the first thing. The first thing is you have to. You know, the mindset have to be really strong. Mm. So I, I realized I I didn't have it. So I say, well, what are I gonna keep trying this if I I can't. I can't. But I don't know, I maybe needed some motivation, you know? So when I went back to war with Patrick, yeah, I get a lot of motivation because he knows me a lot and he's very strict. And we only was going to prepare for 10 weeks, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. it's like, okay, 10 weeks. It's not a long time, so let's work. And then 
Oh, I have to say this, uh, you know, Kerry pushed me for real. He pushed me because he, he gave me that extra motivation too because I saw her him, uh, like seven weeks before the show. Who's Kerry? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I'm pronoun uh, pronounce the runs in the name the champion he won oh Kareth Kareth Kerry is Kerry Kareth so okay. okay so okay I understand now Kareth helped motivate you to do this show the one he was in that he won that he beat you in yeah okay yeah so because, take us through because it. I, saw, I saw him <laughs> I normally don't care who is going going to compete yeah I never look I mean never I don't care who's going to compete. It's, it's what I used to do, you know? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> because I, I always say, like, if I get in that 100%, mm. I know I can fight with... It doesn't matter who is going to compete. Yeah. But what happened with, with Kerrit? Yep, Kerrit, yep. Uh, he has a... He, when I saw him... With this great condition, yep. being like seven weeks or I don't know, a long time before the show, and I was just doing 10 weeks preparation, yep. I said, mm, I need to I need to get like a crazy condition in this time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's the only way I, I can fight, you know, with him. Mm -hmm. So I worked, you know, hard because I knew it doesn't matter my shape, you know, my body, my structure, my genetics, whatever. If I didn't get that condition, I was not going to win. So that made me work hard in that 10, you know. So so ten this 10 weeks, I mean, uh, Patrick, Patrick Tui, your coach, my good friend, saying, okay, he's seen the pictures, you know, you're, you're, you're cheating on your diet, you're not, you're using a bit of TRT, and he knows that you've got a lot of work to do in 10 weeks. Yeah. What, what, what differences in this intense 10 weeks was there to a normal prep? Like, what did he have you doing differently? Was it extra cardio? <laughs> was it <laughs> harder dieting? What was it? I, 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 we didn't change anything. Okay, if Patrick, okay. Patrick, uh, Patrick is just a genius. Yep. I think he's a genius. He is, he is. He is. Yeah. And then he sent me the plan. Yeah. And okay, I was, this time I was doing the plan 100%. Okay, good. So, you know, uh, my body starts change like changing a lot like fast mm. so every week every four days five when i sent uh updates to him yep he saw it like it was i was improving a lot so he was like okay let's do this diet let's keep this diet till this day or next week or something mm -hmm. but when i, I send a date he realized I was improving, so it's like oh, I don't need to change anything. So keep keep doing the same. <laughs> yeah, and I was doing the same the whole the whole ten weeks. Heck, the whole really just stayed on the same, no adjustments or. Yeah, because I I was waiting for him to <laughs> to cut down the carbohydrates, you know. Yeah. And then no, when I was even. What he did was increase my carbohydrates sometimes. Wow. And he sent me some cheat meals. He said, yeah. go eat uh, some dessert and, you know, nigiris and <laughs> do a cheat meal. Yeah. And then he started increase. I had a, you know, I have a low and hard, um, low and high day yeah. of carb normally. And then he started increasing my high day. Double, so it was a lot of food. That's incredible. I was waiting for. H hang you know, on, are you are you one of these guys that starts at a body weight and then ends at the same body weight? You're just your composition changes. What was 
Like, do you start from a low body well, weight or I, and I, end up at a high body I was weight? Waiting for my body weight to, you know, to go down. Yeah, like, you were building. You were building but, muscle. You were building muscle yeah, on the prep. I think it was like incredible. My body weight is getting stuck in. He's a genetic freak. Two eight pounds. Yeah. And then my body uh, started to get full. Yeah. And then it was like getting full, getting lean. Mm. Full, lean. And then when I was close to the show, I was weighing more than 212. <laughs> yeah. I was weighing more to turn 212 and looking bigger. <laughs> so I was starting to get a little worried because I say like, oh, I, I maybe I'll have to fight with the weight in. Yeah. Like, uh, I have to struggle with ha- that. Hang on, hang on. How many weeks out were you over 212? How many weeks out at what point? Sorry? Uh, at, what, at what point of the prep were you over 212? How many weeks out? Oh, like two weeks or oh, three shit. weeks. So two weeks out, you were what, 215, something like that? 220? Yeah, yeah like 215. Okay, two, so... No, not too much. Not I mean, too much to worry. Don't worry because I... <laughs> When I sometimes I weigh in the night, well, in the night you weigh a lot more. Yeah. It was like close to 220 in the morning, <laughs> you know, it was like 214, 215. Mm. But I knew I knew I was holding some water too, so. Mm. But I was, you know, I was a little worried because I saw my body uh, was improving. So the more the more time we were in this preparation, mm-hmm. it was like growing. Yeah, you did. You did like a Kevin Navrone where you're you're building and getting le- you're building muscle and and like basically getting leaner as the prep goes. That tells you that you're you're a hyper responder. You know, that's someone yeah. that really that's someone who's got the. the the best kinds of genetics for bodybuilding. And it doesn't mean you have to go like up to 260, 270 in the off season to kind of, do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's actually a much healthier way of doing it, mate. Safer. Yeah. It is. I mean, I, I just realized that because I told you I never did a preparation like really 100%. Mm. I'm working 100%, uh, you know, training, but as I knew I was I wasn't going to compete again after New York Pro. <laughs> I didn't crazy. I, I mean I did my hundred percent in the training mm. and the diet. Mm. But I didn't for my show in the stage. I didn't practice a choreography. I mean what I what I did in the stage was I created just when I step in the stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's okay. why, well, it was, I don't know, maybe not so good or, I don't know. But I, I, yeah, I pause when I, even the music, mm-hmm. I didn't record that music for the, for the, um, for the show. I have that memory. I have a USB. Yep. That song that I put there in, the, in that song. <laughs> yeah for one year right so when i went to you know to to do my choreography i just gave this guy the music and yeah step in the stage do uh, do my posing routine that i i didn't practice on i didn't anything even my i didn't practice in my posing in anything Mm. i didn't i just wanted to do the show look good and Live. Stop competing. So, so you took second in like arguably the third most prestigious bodybuilding show on the planet, and like you know you think about like ten weeks before, you know, did you think that like ten weeks later you'd be doing so well in such a big contest, you know? And yes, you gave it a hundred percent in those ten weeks, but do you not think now, given 
how good you know you are and how good you could be if you really gave it like all out for the next couple of years do you think do you think okay right i could really i could really do something here as a pro yeah everything changed about after that new year pro show everything changed on my right. mind okay okay everything yeah but I, i'm glad i'm glad you know i kind of knew i I was going to do well if I, if this time I really, you know, could keep my hundred percent in the preparation. Yeah. Um. Part of that was being working with Patrick. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I, 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 you know, I don't know. Patrick motivates me a lot. Mm -hmm. Working with him is something big for me. So. When I knew I was going to work with him again, I knew I was going to look good in the show. Yeah. So, yeah, I tried my best. Tried my best. So, what, I mean, have you spoke to Patrick about what he'd like your next steps to be in terms of this year and beyond? Yeah. We are planning some shows. Yeah. And we have, I mean, we did a 10 weeks preparation and I was uh, very off. So we started at this point and we have plenty of weeks to go to another show. So looking for, for, for some shows because the first show starts um, like about seven, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. then our shows uh, like are coming like every week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. There is Chicago, Tampa, Texas. Yes, uh, do them all. Do them all. Lake Tamuri in Atlanta. I yeah, think. yeah. So yeah, we we are we are planning now, but now it's different because you know I I feel different. I want I want this. I never want this. Wanted this so bad. Now I want it. I want it, I, and I, I'm going to work hard. Mm. I'm, going to, I'm going to take this serious now. You should. And then, yeah. So, yeah, Patrick and me, we are uh, planning to do big things ahead. Look, if Patrick sees potential in you and he, want, and he has that much faith in you and it's, you've rewarded it with that second place at the New York Pro. I mean, just say Kareth had chose to do, to go and defend at Tampa, uh, sorry, Texas, you know, you'd be the New York Pro champion. Do you know what I mean? That's no, that's not a, that's not a small thing. That's a big, do you know what I mean? You, you should oh, have, yeah. like you're saying, you've got confidence now and you've got, you know, now you want it. And it's like, well, you should, because you've just done something pretty incredible, you know, and you're, you're a complete unknown. So it's not like the judges go like, okay, Diego's doing the show. Let's call him out first. We know he's going to be looking good. They didn't really know who you were until they called you out. So I, you know, it's seriously. And you know what? It's a real shame that you can't, get out of America to come and do some shows in Europe because I'd love to see you in shows like some Spain shows or you know from, you know some of these other Europeans because there's some great shows I'd love to see you do I'd love to see you do <laughs> yeah I I didn't expect that I didn't expect anything you know that happened in the New York Pro like mm. for me it's it's not being the two, the top two, what make me happy. Okay. It's the the support of the people. Okay. Because I get, I got a lot of support, hmm. a lot of support in the New York Pro, and after New York Pro, it was like, you know, something really, really important. So so they 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 supported you like obviously from the crowd response. Are you talking about crowd response or how people DM'd you or supported you on social everyone, media? What was everyone it? Everyone, I, I mean, I, I hear in the, you know, the crowd in the in the New York Pro. Yeah. 
like a lot of people was telling I, I, I was going to win. Wow. And a lot of people was telling and posting videos on me, doing a lot of comments, like who say the freaks wait till night to come out. <laughs> yeah. uh, the talk of the show, Mm -hmm. Why gorilla? We weren't we were not expecting this. A lot of things that you know it really motivates me. Um, and sorry, sorry to interrupt. That's as like you're, and they didn't know who you were really before the show. So you're just there. See, they're responding to you as they see you on stage. Not this is Diego. We know exactly who he is. We know what shows he's done. He's done 30 pro no, shows. No, no. Like this is like, oh my God, this guy's awesome. Just and like, they're responding. Just like very few people from my circle yeah. knew I was going to do New York. And there you go. There you like, go. Yeah. You are looking good. Yeah. You're going to do something good. But I wasn't like, you know, it was, it didn't have that motivation. So, mm. but after that day, the same day, um, after that day, yeah, like every day have been, I have been very busy with social media, <laughs> very busy mm. every day, and you know it's yeah that makes me so happy. New because... York, New York's a very good show to get noticed and get the fan base because like that was that was the same show where Dorian Yates, 1990, when he took second in what was then the Night of Champions. That show launched him. This show, I always say, the New York Pro, or, you know, what was the New York Night of Champions, is a good show. If you're, if you're a really good newcomer and you do well, that's probably the best show to do it at. Yeah, I, I hear the New York Pro was one of the hardest. Yeah. On the, yeah. You know. You're on the so, map now, yeah. mate. You're on the radar now, mate. You're on the map. You're on the map. People know who you are. Like, I, I, I messaged Patrick straight away and I said, who is this kid? I said, because I've seen you posting about him. And instantly he just sent me your number. He said, like, contact him. I said, I, said, I, I, I really like the look of this guy. I said, he looks awesome. I said, it's, uh, and I'm glad to see that you're working with Patrick because then I know you'll get the best out of him. So I was really, really happy to, um, to, to just like I said, see you two working together. So um, what's this, um, this, your Instagram handle, White Gorilla? Tell us about that. <laughs> Uh, why the name? Yeah, White Gorilla. Why? Why? Well, it started before, before, you know, some friends in Colombia. Yeah. Yeah, mostly one friend that he used to be my coach. Yeah. When I just started competing in the amateur. Mm -hmm. He used to call me the uh, Gorilla. <laughs> uh, I don't remember, but something like that. So it came from some years ago mm. when I was in Colombia. Because cool. he said, you know, my structure, like, I don't know, my, yeah, like my structure, but I, I don't, honestly, I don't remember very well, but he started with that and I take it. Yeah, why not? And I why keep not? it, I keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Keep it. <laughs> yeah. You need, honestly, if you're, if you're, you know, you need a good nickname in bodybuilding. We got, like I said, we got the boogeyman here. You know, blessing the boogeyman. So, um, obviously, training in New York. Where do you do you train at Steve Weinberger's gym, or or where? Where is it? Where 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 do you call home, mate, for your gym? Oh, mm, when I'm in Manhattan, I I don't go to the same gym every day. Oh wow! And okay. I go to it. Be, it can be whatever. I mean, I I go to small gyms. Uh, if there is a gym like five minutes from my Apartment, doesn't yeah. matter if it's small and no bodybuilding gym, I, I go there. Dear. Or I, you know, or sometimes I just want to switch and I go to another gym. But I definitely love Beth Francis. Mm. Just the problem is Beth Francis is it's like one hour sometimes because the traffic is like more than one hour driving. Yeah. yeah. So, I was going there when I came here before the show, but uh, it took me so long to go and then back, and I was tired driving, so I was I decided not to 
keep going there so yeah. far. But I love that. I love that gene, the vibe. Uh, the you know, it's just all school and this. This is great, great energy, everything. So I love that gym, but I can't, I can't go there every day. Yeah. Mm. But I'm mostly preparing in Miami. Okay. Is what, I mean, I live in, I live in between uh, Miami and New York. Okay. Why? I'm mostly in Miami. Why? Sorry. Why? 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 I'm, why do you split between the two? What's the What's the main reason? Is it work or your career or? Oh yeah, uh, everything. I, I um, Manhattan was the first city where I come. Uh, I live when I come from Colombia. Yeah. So I love New York. I love New York, and then I moved to Miami, mm -hmm. and I love Miami too. Miami mm -hmm. is like being in vacation every day. Mm -hmm. Really nice. So. I'm living in Miami, but I I have an apartment here in, in Manhattan. Wow, that apartment. So yeah, I come. Sometimes I come often. Sometimes I just couple months, you know, without coming to New York. Mm -hmm. But I love New York. Mm -hmm. But I'm working, you know, now mostly in Miami, doing my preparation there. I have a a friend that is helping me in the training. Yep. Omar Garcia, he was helping me the whole 10 weeks, pushing me and we we didn't skip any day. We mm. killed every day. So, and um, you know, I have my mail prep company. Uh, I mean, the, the mail prep that was, you know, supporting me mm -hmm. there. I have everything. So, now to do like 100% preparation, yeah, I have everything there. So I'm going back to Miami in about two, three days. Okay. So to, I already started my preparation, but I, you know, waiting to be in Miami to do really, to go really hard. Yeah. This prep. How old are you, Diego? I'm 33. 33. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. You look, you look even younger, actually. <laughs> I was thinking, is he like one of these guys that's like 23 or something? He was like a junior two years ago or something. It's <laughs> like you just you uh, seem so to have... Maybe because I take I, yeah. I my, my beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, what, and also, what is the, um, what's the next step? What's the next show? I mean, what, what, have you, what are you most kind of... What's the one that you're really looking to, to go for? Well, I'm not sure yet. We are we're planning on it, but it could be uh, Linda Murray. Oh, Savannah. Is it Savannah? Atlanta or yeah, Chicago. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Chicago good. is one week after that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then Tampa is two weeks mm -hmm. after Chicago. I have plenty of shows, like, you know. I... I think, I, like, if you'd have told me that you wanted, you were going to either shut it down until next year, like, if you've got second in a high-profile show, then go and do as many as you can. And if you can't travel to outside of America, then just do all the American ones. Just see how you do. If you're, if you're happy yeah. to do that, and really... And also, it gives Patrick a chance to try different things and different approaches, because, you know, like, obviously, you, you did very well at New York, but maybe Patrick might want to try something a little bit different for a different show, you know, because I, I know how Patrick preps. I mean, it's there's so many different variables and different things he can try with carb up and drying out and, you know, and obviously the f the final week, you know. So you might want to experiment with you a little bit to see which brings you in up your absolute best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, definitely I'm going to try mm. to do some, you know, shows Good. here. Good. I mean, I'm, go I'm going to... To try to go to Olympia this year. Good. What as a, as a competitor? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I crackled there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I wanted, Good. I want it. I want to compete in Olympia. So I I think I'm going to work really hard to qualify mm -hmm. to Olympia. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've. Um, I think you're definitely going to see a real rise in kind of attention. Everything, like I said, because you've really, you've really, you've really hit the hit the ground running. And I think the two twelve needs some 
exciting new faces, you know, because especially guys like yourself to come in and instantly do well, you know, and I seen that you could have been a little bit, your condition could be a little bit better again. So if you get that condition a little bit tighter and stuff, you know, you, you're going to, you're probably going to pick up at least one win this year. So we will yeah. see we will see you at the Olympia, and, you, and if you do, and don't be one of these guys that qualifies for the Olympia and then says, "No, I don't think I want to do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna rest till next year." Bloody do it! <laughs> well, uh, I'm very positive about um, improving my look. Yeah, I think uh, I think I, I I mean in ten weeks I didn't. You know, get my hundred uh, percent uh, like the shape I I I know I can achieve. Yep. So, well, I'm positive that next show I'm gonna look much better. I I even you no know, I, I I yeah I, I I don't think I look in the New York Pro like very you know like great about condition and you look, that you look good but you know you can always try different things and maybe come a little yeah, bit sharper or yeah. fuller or something you know just to, like yeah, i said I, you I, know I, the best is yet to come i think that's what i'm trying to say I, yeah we're gonna try to hmm. get a little more you know good. dry maybe look bigger mm -hmm. well just put just 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 let patrick take care of it because he knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing i don't know you know i i have to plan what i want in my mm. mind so yes of course yeah. i i'm gonna work for that good so i hope i qualify you will you will i think you will diego um before i let you go is there any sponsors or anyone you'd like to thank no, honestly, I'm <laughs> I'm very new in this yeah. world. I don't, <laughs> just Patrick, I, just Patrick. <laughs> I don't I don't have um, sponsors, but they they are very welcome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we can now start talking about it with uh -huh. some brands or whatever. Mm. I'll I'll just wait. I think I, you know, I I'm very patient and well, but I honestly yes. No sponsor, but I, I want to thank, first of all, Patrick Tour. Yeah. Because whoop, whoop. he's the number one, you know, person that I need to thank because he pushed me, he motivated me. He's, he's a genius and yep. I really admire him and respect him. Mm -hmm. He's my friend. So he's the first person and then, you know, uh, my trainer in Miami, Omar Garcia, mm -hmm. he's great too. Um, I got, I got, I, I want to thank everyone that have been supporting me in social media. There's a lot of people there, a lot of pages. <laughs> I want to thank you because, you know, you gave me this opportunity to be here and talking about everything letting people know more about my life about mm -hmm. me and well eventually maybe i'll, I'll appear in in the magazine md yeah we can, <laughs> we, can, we can do that we can do that we can do that we can sort that yes, uh, yeah 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 you're gonna work hard so good maybe good. We, 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 we 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 can have the chance uh, eventually to do something um i tell you what though i'll tell you what though if you w when you get your win i want to get you on with patrick again this year before the olympia there you go great i i because i yeah because sometimes i've done that i've done that with patrick you know because i mean you know and uh, i i would like to hear maybe like maybe the game plan for the olympia or something and maybe you know it'd be a different dynamic i think it'd be really interesting and we can sort of get into some really interesting technical subjects and stuff like that i think it'd be cool some good topics Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Brilliant. Sounds uh, great. I'll be waiting for that. <laughs> Good. All right, then, mate. Well, uh, Diego, I want to thank you so much for coming to MD Globe Muscle. And, and I'm loving this New York fiber optic because this bloody, this, this picture is absolutely incredible you are pin sharp and it really makes for a good interview it makes it easier you know to converse properly and mate what are you talking about your english is perfect oh <laughs> well i don't know i i feel like i need to keep improving you know i wow, yeah. i learn 
have been been learning English English just few years I have been living here. Oh wow, okay. But Good. I've been very like interested in, in the language. Mm. Um, but I feel like uh, yeah I need to to learn a lot. I still ne- need to learn a lot but yeah I'm working on it. Good. I'm working Good. Well you're doing great mate. You're doing great. And um, like I said I'm just glad I kind of got you know, to sort of to know more about you, because like I said, we all, as bodybuilding fans, I always say this all the time on the show. We love to see the new faces. We love to see these new guys coming through, and especially when they hit the ground running and they do very, very well. And it's like, wow! It's like we just want to jump on it first, you know? Because like, you know, we, you know, it's you're a new guy, and you're probably gonna, you know, you're gonna do very, very well in the sport, you know. And like I said, you've got a great coach guiding you, and you seem to have a very, very good attitude, and you know, and you, you seem to really want it now as well, which is good. Like, no, I, I can't believe when you told me we're gonna stop competing. I was like, no, it's like no, <laughs> well, don't, don't. This, you've just this, got started. Definitely, this show yes. changed everything in good. my mind about. So it should. It motivates me a lot to go, yeah. to keep going. Um, well, uh, I, I have to send like some like uh, to thank my family too mm-hmm. because I you know I want them to know I'm thinking about them and I really miss them. Yeah. Like my father, my mom, Margarita, Omar, they are in Colombia. Shirley, Daniel, Samantha, my sisters and brother mm-hmm. um that's it that's it i'm gonna keep working and i hope when i come back to colombia i'm very successful in this sport mm-hmm. um well and also thank the guy that gave you that cool nickname because i think that's gonna be a, a big talking point <laughs> white gorilla <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool cool yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity and my pleasure, very, mate. My pleasure. Uh, nice to meet you. You're like a real, really nice person. So let's keep in touch. And mm-hmm. oh, so you love you live in London, right? Uh, no, I live in the north of England. Oh. North of England. Oh, okay, okay. About four hours north of London. Oh, mm. well, I think. Uh, England is in my list. Good. You know, places I wanna, I wanna go after I really can travel. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I gotta yeah. go to a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta make a list, get it all done, and like I said, as soon as you, you know, you're, uh, you're sort of, uh, you've been, you know, you can, you can stop being grounded. But um, I mean, I, I always had a few weeks where I didn't have my passport. And yeah. and I had to cancel uh, Sweden, Amsterdam, Ireland, all these trips because I didn't have the the renew the new the new passport. You know, there was a few weeks where I was waiting for it, and it was oh, it was a nightmare. Like feeling like you can't go anywhere or do anything. I was so pissed off, man. It was bad. Actually, you you remind me of something. Stressful. My passport is is going to expire. No, oh, to lie. Don't make so this. If I don't, if I don't, do it. If- Okay, guys, and welcome to Season 5, Episode 34 of MD Glow Muscle Hot News. And of course, actually, it's not Derek this week. It's the other one. Hello. That's yes, not Derek. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, then. Um, I'll be honest. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare this week, uh, Lauren. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, as you know, as well, as you can see in this episode, there's only one guest. That's because... Oh, we had a technical issue with the second guest, and also by the time he, but by the time this goes out, I will have let the person know because I haven't, I haven't had the courage to tell him yet. <laughs> but we had Stu Sutherland, aka Beef Stew, in uh, a fun. <laughs> well, I can, I can, I can take it from me. It was a very good interview, but we had a technical issue and we lost the whole fucking thing. I can so, attest to that too. Because yeah, ha- I was. I, well, I didn't do it, but I was there. But w- what was my face like? Horrified. <laughs> oh, no. Mortified. Honestly, Lauren, because so, there's a lot of equipment in the studio, when something actually goes wrong in this studio, or with the editing, like like last week, obviously last week's episode 33 was two days late. That's because 
we had uh, issues rendering and all. Oh, it was just a, it was a freaking nightmare. I, it really sends me into a spin because I just panic. I go, I panic, and I, I it really gets me down. But uh, anyway, so uh, next week we'll be back to uh, two or three guests, that, uh, like you know, like last week, and um, we're back up to our normal rate. So um, is, is it still captured? It is still capturing. Just to guys let you know, like we really put a lot of effort into the sound and yeah. the lighting as much as we can just mm-hmm. to like make the show different. So, you know, we really appreciate all of the views and the likes and stuff. So if you want Giles to uh, talk about something else, give this a like and comment down below. It's the it's the burden of being a perfectionist. <laughs> It is. I read something on a, an email today about stress. And uh, actually, we really need to get into the news. Yeah. Sorry, we'll talk about this at the end. Right, okay then. Uh, obviously, in this episode, we had a fantastic interview, which we actually did over a week ago because we had to we wanted to double up and get one couple in the bank uh, like sometimes if i if, if lauren's available i like to sort of get ahead of it so i've got a little bit of um you know bit of a uh, interview or, or two sometimes for next week but we had diego guerra guerra sorry um from well he's, he's originally from colombia um you gotta say like colombia <laughs> colombia and um <laughs> Uh, who now lives in New York. He's been in New York since the pandemic. And obviously he watched the interview. So, you know, it, it, it's, and I will admit, I, I, I did stay away from asking him what he did for a living. Because obviously the thing is, no, I know it's silly. And I know I got ribbed for this on the, on the comments. <laughs> but I, I was kind of like dancing around the question because I thought, okay, looks like he's got money. He's from Colombia. And that, I know that's terrible, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> isn't that a little bit a stereotype? It's a little bit judgment. I know, I know, but it's just well, it's just my own stupid brain. But um, but anyway, what a fantastic interview! What a fantastic two twelve athlete. He comes second to Kenneth Bajo at the New York Pro, Um, and I do think we will see this guy at the Olympia this year in the 212, obviously. Um, put, coached by my very, very good friend, Patrick Tour. Um, but um, here he is, obviously doing doing his male modeling thing. Uh, does a lot of photo shoots with, um, what's this, Uz, hang on, i got to say his name. Very, uh, Ulrich Ullman, this is the guy he seems to do most of his photo shoots with in New York. Um, no, because he's actually, no, he, he splits his time between Miami and New York. Where would you want to live? New York, New York or Miami? So hard because New York is the fashion capital, but Miami has the beach. So, Lauren, I went to Miami Beach. <laughs> I, w- I went in 2012. It was, it was shit. It's probably changed in it, 11 years, though. No, Lauren, it was. I was really disappointed. And the clubs were rubbish. And we went to this one club, me and a couple of friends, and they said, oh, this is like the hot spot of Miami. And I'm going to get so much hate now. I really didn't like it. I thought it was, how much was it? $18 for a vodka rebel. So the the story is, you guys, when Giles and I go to Miami, we need some Miamians <laughs> to take us out to the good places. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we'll be welcome now, Lauren. <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, back to Diego. Yes. Yeah, so what what interesting guy. Um, he, I absolutely. He he really really pushed the fact that he's not been given it a hundred percent until now but now he's kind of got real success you know second at the new york pro third biggest pro show he really feels like he wants to give it his all now um so i do see diego uh getting a getting a qualification and a win you know which will obviously get him in this year's olympia but um you know great look at i mean as you can see the physique there put on full screen please lauren yeah so as you can see you know great really good level of thickness good muscle density he's not lacking any body parts his condition's pretty good i think he could still get a bit harder a bit drier Mm. Uh, what do you think lauren I think for he was quite open about his whole story with like the food and yep. how he struggles with getting in condition. And he's saying this is really the first time that he's uh, enjoyed cool, the it? prep up to that stage where he's not hungry. So I think it's um it's really interesting. Wow. So Giles is now looking at some sort of car <laughs> so, instead of his body. Oh, so, sorry, I completely. <laughs> I just got distracted there by the car. <laughs> I like. Do you know what though? You know what do I say? What? what I mean, it's, it's, I one thing I think bodybuilders look very cool in. Suits. Suits. Thank you very much. And he, he dresses really well, so I appreciate that. He's obviously a man who likes the finer things in life, um, like myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, he looks cool. He's got lovely hair. Beautiful Let's hair. Let's see his hair. And in fact, if Beef, Beef Stew was in this episode... Which, oh my uh, gosh, he's which, got great hair. Beef Stew's got uh, absolutely beautiful hair. <laughs> yeah. I taught me actually... Well, God. thing is, I can, say, I can say anything about the interview and no one will know because, well... Anyway. He, I don't know if it's the hair, but Beef Stew kind of looks like he so. should come out of a 70s montage. Yeah, it was, good. it was such a good interview, but I will get him on in a couple of weeks. I and like um, I'm not going to get him on again straight away because, 
you know, some of the conversations, if it feels I've done that before, I'm trying to think when, but um, it happened and you, and you kind of, you have to leave it a couple of weeks because otherwise the questions and the topics you're talking about, you've just talked about them and it's, it can, it can, it sounds a bit stale, sounds a bit shit. So anyway. Just also on that topic, our fail rate with uh, recording is very low. So. Yeah. Well, actually, only happens every few. No, actually months. that actual thing in, I, mean, I think we're on 175 episodes so far. See, average three guests, two, three guests an episode. What's that like? Five, six hundred. That's never happened. Never happened. It happened to me on a Skype recorder when I was doing um, Tiger Talk a couple of years ago. <laughs> we all yeah, I'm recording. checking. Oh, yes, no. it's I'm checking. <laughs> ah! So anyway, like I said, I do apologize. We only have one guest, but, um, you know, we, we do do our best to, to get multiple guests on, you know, with time allowing. Um, but uh, yeah, here's, so anyway, here's here's Diego next to uh, Kenneth Bajer, obviously the winner of the New York Pro. This is the top two. Um, fantastic photographer here by Walt Whitman. Um, very, very good photographer. Very talented. Um, so here he is. That's Jason. This guy I've had on before. Jason Hebert. Oh, Ameri yeah. American bully. American bully. You don't remember him? Do no, I remember the name, but you know, he's got less hair this time. Oh, okay. You don't remember him? No, do I do. do I you? do. Oh, bloody hell. You've got okay. lots of guests. Okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And you've you been doing this how long? A year and a half? Well, I had to take a short break, everyone, because, you know, I do work and I'm sort of yeah. part-time so, pretty soon. So my, selfish. My point being is like <laughs> my time is a little bit limited, so I will be back eventually, but yep. I've had to prioritize with some other personal goals. And also Derek has done a very good job. He's done amazing. So I'm really grateful. But, you know, because there's a lot of wires here on this camera. And if, the, if, it, if this one is too dark or too light, <laughs> Lauren can actually get over and get over the... But I said to Derek, look, if that happens, just let me know and I'll adjust it. Because if that, if you try that, the whole studio is freaking coming down, isn't it? It's crashing yeah. down. Let's you be have honest. to be super flexible to be able to <laughs> adjust this <and> stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So fantastic, uh, fantastic guest there with Diego Guerra. Um, we wish him all the best for his next pro show. Um, I don't remember telling him what his next pro show was. I'm just putting cat hairs on my face. Um, oh, that's nice. Lambo, Lambo. I think that's what, um, is that a Lambo Jeep or a normal one? I don't really know about I really cars. should I really should decat hair the mic because when they come in it, all, it, it goes in the air and then it settles it seems to all gravitate towards this microphone it's because it's fuzzy it's, oh is that yeah. Well, yeah yeah okay right okay then yes yeah, so um yeah so Diego uh, like I said I, I'm, I'm happy we've got new stars in the 212 as well because I think um I'm not, I wouldn't say the 212 class is struggling since like the likes of Flex Lewis and Jose Raymond and Eduardo Correa actually he's still going um um you know, some of these athletes aren't, um, you know, he, uh, sort of, what was I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> stars, rising stars. stars. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Complete brain fart. I've had very high blood sugar today. Forgive me. Um, yeah. So, but like I said, it's nice to see new faces and, we you know, with interesting stories and, and new talent coming through to the 212 because I think it needs it. You know, like um, I was talking to Brian Bullman, the promoter of the Muscle Contest Island. And um, like last year at the, you know, the remember the Irish show we were at? Oh my God. <laughs> he had four 212s. This year he had the class. He made it. He switched it to classic, mm. and he had fifteen athletes. I think that was smart. Yes. What well, thing is? I mean, what what, what is he going to do next year? Is he going to go back to two twelve when he's got very little support from the athletes? There's plenty of two twelve pros in Europe or around the world. You know, somebody look. I mean, D Dave Henry was second. He came all the way from America to try and qualify. I'm surprised so, he didn't make it a bikini shot because they would have been in their droves. Yeah. True. So yeah. Well, yeah. Well, maybe the thing is, if they're going to add a second, it probably would be a female category like bikini. So. So, yeah. So, what about you, Lauren? Do you think you're going to compete again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed we haven't got the camera on today? She's in a hoodie, so she's feeling a bit self-conscious. Obviously, next to super smart, <laughs> super smart tiger here. She doesn't want to... Uh, I was doing cardio. Doing, yeah, we were doing cardio, and he came straight home. And literally, as soon as we finish doing this, we're going to bugger off to the gym. What are you training tonight? Uh, shoulders. Oh, shoulders. Yeah. Um, I did chest yesterday, but it's not that sore. Because mm -hmm. I didn't train it that hard. No, I don't but really I, prob I probably could do shoulders or back tonight. Shoulders and back. Okay. No, I'm not doing both. Well, I do. Pick one. Shoulders. Okay. What, I'm not, I'm not show shoulders. My back, <laughs> we had a good shoulder session. Actually, we had our first training session together, didn't we? It was awesome. If you want us to film a little bit of it and put it no, in here. No, 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 no. No, so that you cameras guys can in catch the gym. up on no. Giles' progress. No, I don't want, no one wants to see that shit. Um, I never, <laughs> I've never, my phone is never goes onto the gym floor. It goes into my bag and it goes behind the counter at the gym. And that is where it stays. It actually in does. fact, <laughs> in fact, Gareth from Legends, I looked in the, uh, I was walking, I was training, was it yesterday or the day before? Anyway, I trained two, both days on the weekend. And um, 
I noticed in the end of the back room. Yeah. I noticed by the deadlift uh, platform, there was a, a, a tripod. Oh. So I took a picture and sent it to him and I said, what the hell is this? So, but the thing is, I mean, he's actually got, he's actually got a deadlift worth recording. Like he's like a six, seven, seven, seven plate, I think. Seven plate That's deadlift. That's quite heavy. So, um, yeah. So what, on I, either uh, side? Well, of course. That's really good. No, dinner plates. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> shush, shush. <laughs> right, anyway, okay, move on quickly because I'm rambling a lot today. Uh, I do love a good ramble. We've got to make up time. Yeah, we've got to make up time. I know. Move. So I'll just keep carrying on. But what if I can stretch this out for three hours so we get a, actually a proper length episode? Right, okay. Now, the reason I wanted to bring up Emily Schubert, our guest on for a fantastic women's physique guest we had on last week. The reason I want to uh, bring up her on Hot News is because she did win the Omaha Pro, as we predicted. So that was really nice timing with... Um, with this interview uh, that we did last week. It was really, really good. But um, yeah, so she's... Because the thing is, she did the um, Pittsburgh and she did the New York Pro, but in both shows, Lauren, she went up against Natalia Covello. Natalia was beautiful. I mean, the miss, I mean, what's the odds of the Olympia champion showing up to the two shows that you decide to do that you are good enough to win? I mean, that's a, that's, that's a bummer, I isn't it? I don't think it's... Any, I think those two shows are what the most prestigious next to the Arnold's and the Olympia. So like, yeah. like if you're going to be an Olympian champion, you just want to like yeah, get those title wins. Hadi, Derek Lunsford, um, who's the 212 champion at the moment? My God, my brain's gone. My brain's gone really blank today. Oh my God, Sean Clarida. Sean, oh God, Sean. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> Love you, mate. Yeah, Sean Clarida. I mean, he's not going to compete before the Olympia. Is he? He's got no reason to, unless he does something like an open show. Are we still working? You're, you're so, still going. Sorry, I'm really paranoid that something's going to go wrong again. No, so, no, no. Lauren fixes it. No, yeah, Lauren fix it. Please, just please watch that laptop like a hawk because that's, that's, that was the that was the culprit yesterday that lost the the beef stew interview. And I'm poor old Derek. I mean, I, I, I felt bad for him. Felt worse myself, though. <laughs> and all you guys. <laughs> anyway, right. So, yeah. So, basically, want to congratulate Emily, congratulate Emily Schubert. I think she's going to be first call out at the Olympia. I do see her as being top five, maybe even top three. She is that good. So um, absolutely fantastic. And the conditioning is off the, off the charts. And uh, there she is with another lady I was uh, hyping a couple of years ago who actually oh. delivered with two third places at the Olympia, Brooke Walker. Absolutely, probably, yeah, I think she's one of my favorite women's physique pros because when I was hyping her, she hadn't even won a pro show. Then as I had her on like a couple of times on Global, and I really said, I said, I think you've got real serious potential. She then won a pro show, then got third place at the Olympia and then re de was it? replicated that th the following year with another third place at last year's Olympia. So it's really nice when you go out on a limb and make these kinds of predictions and these ladies and, and, the, and the guys, you know, really, really, you know, live up to it and, um, you know, and follow up. So these are two, two women's physique pros that I think, I think are going to be in the top five this year. I think they're that good. Yeah, they're um, awesome. In fact, Emily, I think Emily's Emily's conditioning is next level. She is. She's an absolute badass athlete. Go check out the interview in last, uh, last episode, episode 33. And um, I like that she's wearing heels because I, oh, never, she's wearing heels, yeah. I never see women's physique competitors ever really wearing heels. Showing off the calves. They look amazing legs. Yeah. Oh she's, her, her quads are insane. I mean, to be, that was, remember I said, I said that, I said, Can this, is this lady going to beat um, Aww, Natalia like Coelho? And you said, and you said, well, I think Natalia will win it. The only reason why I said Natalia would win it on that instance was because she had a bit more of an X shape. Uh, her frame was just slightly yeah. more tight but you know emily looks amazing she's incredible so and I congratulations think, I think, but uh yeah no i think everyone you know geez that that level my god lauren i think she's gonna push natalia i, I think, think she's she gonna will. i think she pushed natalia in these two shows and i think the same's gonna happen again at the olympia well you even, know. even with all the other athletes in the mix at Olympia as well i think i mean i could see her i could see them both in the top three at the Absolutely, olympia yeah so anyway so a big congratulations there to emily schubert uh and also it made me it made me realize and also seeing the reaction from the viewers uh, made me realise that actually I it reminded me that I that we always get a good response when we get the female athletes on. I th I think I need to start doing it more often. But do you know what? Can I be honest? There's not many I'm that interested in speaking to. I don't know what I. There's not many that kind of catch my attention like the guys you know and the physiques and their stories and and I just I just I'm not that intrigued by some of them. But um, Emily kept popping up on my feed and it was it was the conditioning. You know me, I'm an absolute conditioning snob. And um, yeah, so I don't know. It was great to get on, but um, I've I've always you're more off more often than not you're pleasantly surprised with when you get the female athletes on. Mm. So that is my point, basically. So yeah, so now uh, Emily is now going to the Olympia, and uh, look at that shot, Jesus Christ! Let me see. Wow, it. look at look at this! Look at that! Dang. Holy shit! Wow. wow! Oh my god! That is, I mean, imagine. My God, just imagine. 
start jumping out of bed when, and then looking, checking at your quads and they're, and they're flickering and things <laughs> are going on and veins are pumping. and That's incredible. I mean, I, I think the most vascular legs in bodybuilding right now are Vlad Suhorochko. And I always think, I always think, I, I bet, I bet he's he's always holding his breath when he's shaving his legs. Ooh. Because you get a you get a nick. He doesn't shave them. He probably like hair creams do, them. Should we ask him? You can. Get, I'm gonna ask him. I'm yep. gonna ask Vlad. I'm gonna say, how, what do you do? Do you shave your legs or do you exfoliate? Giles is most personal. No, not ex, no exfoliating's the. No, you get a, like a hair cream and then. What's you exfoliating? Put it on. Exfoliant's when you take off the dead skins and you scrub it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So what's the 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 hair one? The hair removal cream. I've never used that. Oh, it's very good. You should try it. What I used to do, because um, there was one time I did two thousand second year, second year of competing, I used IGF. And it made me very... What is that? Insulin growth factor. I don't know why you it, would use that. I know. Probably give me diabetes. <laughs> 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 oh, well, it's worth it. And uh, the veins on my legs. <laughs> the, the veins on my legs were just, within days, they just appeared from nowhere. Oh and there was God. one thick one right at the sorry, well, <laughs> reaching down, right at the top of my inside <laughs> leg, and um, it was it just I and I all down my shins, and I'd never had that before. And as soon as I stopped using it, it went away. Oh. But because um, I, I used to use the clippers, and then I would I'd touch up with a razor, being yeah. in the kitchen, like with my leg leg up on the thing, and you know, getting all getting all the nooks and crannies. Ew. Getting all the anyway. <laughs> why am I talking about shaving legs? Oh yes, that's right, Emily Schubert. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so I'm really, really happy for Emily, and um, and like I said, it's inspired me to get more women on MD Globe Muscle, and um, she's just freaking amazing. What an amazing athlete! And uh, you know, if you think guys, if you think conditions hard to get, try being a woman and getting condi- <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> Just identify as a woman and then see how see how uh, hard that is to um, uh, achieve. So yeah, so I just it's a crazy legs. It's just incredible, right? Okay, then we're going to finish off with bodybuilders without borders, which is um, because obviously, well, yesterday was Monday. Today, yesterday was the Toronto Pro, um, and also I missed out. No, I didn't actually. I didn't miss out the live, but uh, we had a technical issue on that as well. Well, basically, uh, that video got deleted this as well. weekend was just a bit of a blip. It was. And I just, I think we, we were we were all on the MD group chat. We we're all kind of supporting each other and everything oh, because we were yeah. feeling so low that we, that we, because thing is, technical issues are really out of your control because all this equipment, I check it all. I do everything. Mm-hmm. We do everything we can in our power. But if something like won't render or it's like a corrupt file or something, it can just be pure bad luck. Yes. That's so true. you know, um, like, look, I'm I'm looking at myself now on the TV screen because I want to make sure that there's no lighting. Because sp- last week we had the, the episode 33, we had the lighting was all over the place. The sun was going in and out, and it was moving, and and it was bloody light spots, and then it went dark, and oh, it was nightmare. So I had to do a lot of uh, post editing. Yeah. That was anyway, so people don't long. care about that. They want to hear about Ian Valier winning the Toronto Pro. Um, but I've mixed feelings about Ian Valier winning the Toronto Pro. Um, it wasn't probably his clearest victory that he's ever had. And I do think there's, I don't, I think there's maybe some decline in his physique. There's um, some stuff going on in the chest uh, and the, and other areas. Um, in fact, his back looked a lot better actually than it did at the Olympia. Cause it looked like the, the, the he was getting a bit of Rami lower lat atrophy, mm. which, um, which I couldn't really tell was there in this one. It was more his chest that was like the glaring weakness for me in this event. But, um, he won it very, 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 very narrowly because Hassan Mustafa here, mm. um, now prepped by Chad Nichols, he was prepped by um, AJ Sims before and then uh, Chris Sito okay. before that. But um, I thought I, I, had a, I thought Joe Seaman was going to get a better placing because he looked the biggest. He looked the biggest. He was, he was in great condition, but he ended up in fifth place. And also really, really happy for uh, Robin Strand getting fourth place in much, much better condition than when he was at the New York Pro uh, two weeks previously. Was it two weeks or three weeks? I can't remember. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. But, um, yeah, also a fantastic interview. We talked about eating disorders. Remember we, we listened to it and yeah, we were in bed? It was an incredible episode. Thank you for sharing that. Because yeah. Because it was I d- really, I mean, really something. I mean, when, when you can... I, I think is people can always resonate with something that's like a human story and something that they've overcome because we look at these bodybuilders and you, they look like superheroes they look like bloody gods you know and then when you realize actually they're just normal people with the same struggles that we all have you know and, and addictions and all these different types of disorders and stuff like it these people aren't immune to that and in fact some of them are attracted to bodybuilding because it helps them deal with it um and we talked about eating disorders and uh, and all sorts it was fantastic go check it out if you've not seen it um, really, really good interview, and and the, the guest after was actually a freaking no show, which really pissed me off. Thank you, and because um, I wanted to carry on talking to Robin, you see, because we had a bit of a we, we were a little bit late starting, we had some problems with the connection, but we got it sorted. And then just as it was starting to get rolling, I had to kind of pull it short because the next guest who was due, due to show up didn't show up. So I wished. So basically, what I'm saying is, I will be getting Robin Strand back on yeah, he was great. for a part two because also yeah. I felt a bit of a. I got a real because I've never really spoke to him before. 
and I got a really good connection and vibe with him, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a sort of, and I, I felt like he really appreciated what we're doing here at Globe Muscle. And um, yeah, it was a fantastic interview and I can't wait to get him back on. And of course, Joe Seam was absolutely always brilliant. I love Joe. He's a, he's a really cool guy. So yeah, so, um, so Robert is climbing. This is his best placing yet, fourth place. Um, and of course we had Hassan Mustafa in second, who just looked absolutely incredible. I think he could have won it. Um, I thought he was going to win it. Um, but Ian Vallier always seems to look a little bit better for the finals. Uh, he, I don't really... I mean, someone of Ian Vallier's calibre, you'd expect him to come in and just completely dominate this one and absolutely knock everyone out. But it didn't really happen. So, um, And here's this new guy. This new guy won the Cali Pro, Lauren. Okay. This is Ross... Uh, it's not Ross Flanagan. What's his last name? Hang on, let me just click on him. Ross Flanagan? No, that, that's his Instagram, but his name is... Oh, what's this? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ross Patrick, uh, the the flavor bo- uh, sauce flavor boss. Oh, flavor gang. Sorry. Um, yeah. So he was he won the Cali Pro. I'd never heard of this guy. Oh, sorry. I was just. Doing that. Was like, You're right. With yeah. Oh, I I just extended his Instagram page so you guys could all follow it for a little bit longer. Oh, okay. Okay. Where am I? Where am but, I? But okay. um, Ross Patrick. So okay. Yeah, Ross Patrick. Yeah. So he was third place. So I mean, I I was that was a bit of a big gamble, you know, because once because I personally if I was a pro and I won a show I'd probably shut it down to the Olympia because the next show if it's a tougher quali- quality and you could go for a guy against guys like Hassan Mustafa and Ian Vallier I would probably shut it down I'd probably find an excuse not to do it but he apparently was always commi- he already committed so I do respect him for doing that so um so he you know third place in the first place that shows you know that's um that's that's really good I think that's a good thing mm-hmm. so um but uh, personally I would have pulled out <laughs> and also we had this um Polish guy I he turned pro I'm sure he turned pro in in England a couple of years ago I might be wrong um a guy called Piotr Piotr Berecki um so European guy uh looked absolutely fantastic and of course we had uh, the Mass 212 I haven't got his name in front of me it's Leon Sion Yup Jup or something. Um, I've got his number because he's prepped by Milos Sarjev. This guy here. This guy here, Lauren. Which one? Um, the, is he Korean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we, I think we were kind of expecting him to win this. But, um, he was fifth at New York Pro, second here. So he is, he is improving, but he still needs to get harder. So I'm sure Milos is on the case and we will see him um, qualifying for the Olympia because, you know, he's uh, and he seems a cool guy. I've been messaging him back and forth. Uh, probably get him on my next episode of Global, actually. Um, so yeah, so so like you said, he's 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 gone from fifth to New York, second here. So he is kind of he's getting close to getting a qualification now. So let's have a quick look on borders with body builders without borders. Also, uh, the sad death uh, passing of Jeff Saigo. I've never met Jeff beforehand, but a lot of people have been posting about him. A very well thought of guy, um, photographer, videographer. And uh, yeah, he passed away. I don't know how, I don't know why. Um, but um, yeah, so big, uh, big condolences there to his family and friends. Um, you know, we, you know, we're all a big family in this bodybuilding community, and it's we 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 all take a hit. Even if I, I knew the name, I knew his work, but I never met him personally. But we we you know, I still it still makes us feel bad, you know. So um, so yeah. Oh, that's um, what was his name? I forgot his name now. My God, my brain's not working today. You know, my blood mm. sugar's been high. I can't. I forgot, this is a guy who got eighth in the Olympia in 2016. I remember his placing. Uh, Justin Compton, that's his name. Justin Compton, yeah. He, he, he had um, some vein vascular problems or something and um, retired. Ooh. But I thought he was going to be like the next Dennis Wolf. He was incredible. So, okay, then let's have another quick look, see if there's anything else interesting on here. Um, okay, let's have a look at v- Valier um, posing. See, there's something going on with his chest. Oops. Can you see it, Lauren? Hang on, let me see. Can you see? It's something, like, I mean, if they... It, Someone posted a comparison picture of him at the 2018 Olympia doing the most, same most hands class, most muscular. And in this one, um, like you can see his chest is something it's starting. There's something going on. There's something, there's some weird tear or so. It's not, I don't think it's a tear. I think it's just like muscle damage. Yeah. See the left chest. Look at the left pack. Mm. There's a bit of a thing down the middle. Look. There's yeah, a bit of a gap, isn't there? See the gap? Yeah, that wasn't there before. And it's a bit flat. Maybe, I, mean, maybe, I mean, maybe he was flat as well. That you know, if they're if they're a little bit depleted and stuff, and they maybe you know really really push the conditioning and they haven't come in, maybe they're you know they're not filling out as well the, as well as they'd like to, but uh, at least he's got a win now and he can get back to the Olympia because he fell to eleventh place last year. He's been seventh place at the Olympia, but um, Ian's a fierce competitor. Yeah, he and, uh, See, look, I personally, I know Hassan Mustafa's got like a bit of a thicker waist, but I, I kind of like. I, I think I would have had him winning it. Well. Look at the middle bicep. Look, uh, I think I'm, I'm a waist person. I like it to be nice and tight. Yeah. So I, I think Hassan Mustafa looks awesome, but you just bring it in. I know, I know. The thing is, it's, he's, he's such a thickly muscled guy. I mean, it's... 
I think with them. Um, I like his chest. My God, that's beautiful. Uh, do, you, do you know what though? He looks really good in the compulsories. When he actually hits the pose, nice. when he actually hits the pose, like his side chest, his rear double bicep, you know, he looks really, really good. But See, this is what I like. I like the crowd pleasing. Thing. You love the most muscular, don't you? I do. It's you're, the you're, best you do, one. You do your happy clap at the uh, at the shows when you're there. That's just because that's probably one of the first bodybuilding poses I ever saw with, oh, really? as a as a kid. So for me, it's it's like. That's what bodybuilding is. Yeah, I suppose. Well, it's the one that gets the crowd going, isn't it? Well, it gets me going. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, Thomas de Bastia, the, um, what is he, Czech? Uh, uh, 212. Um, he's switching to open. This was a guy, do you remember from Prague? I did, EVLS. Yeah, was he second? He was He was brilliant. Was he second? He was second, wasn't he? I can't remember the place. Won it. So yeah, so he's up to 238 here. He's doing the Portugal Pro um and um yeah obviously another one of these guys that was probably one of those guys that was struggling to make 212 and just wanted to um and just to sort of take that pressure off and see how his body because thing is a bodybuilder you're a bodybuilder mm. you know you're, you're building your body and if and, and if you're going to keep on growing and then you're, you're it's, it's a stress and it's a struggle to make a make a weight class why put that pressure on yourself just move up and uh and uh you know grow up into the grow up <laughs> grow up into the into the open class so like um broku's done uh, jason lowe who was also in the in the Toronto Pro? I think he was about eighth or ninth. But um, oh yeah, Vlad. Uh, Vlad, I would imagine, is competing very soon. Looking like by the looks of this, he looks great. Holy shit! Prepped oh by gosh. Dennis Wolf now. Out in living out in um, is it Dubai? He's out. Dubai. Well, it's working for him. Is it Dubai? Dubai or Kuwait? Dubai? No, know. it's Dubai. No, is it Dubai? Sure. I can't remember one of them. But um, I like I, his do rag. He's cool, isn't he? I, 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 Vlad's one of my favorite. Vlad's Vlad's my boy. Your boy. I, I feel I feel <laughs> like a fatherly figure to Vlad because I'm 47 now. I know. And he's what, like 12? <laughs> I forget. He's 20. No, he's 20. 28. No, he's 25, 26, isn't 26? he? 26. I don't but, know. Yeah, I think he's, he's well. He's younger than Nick Walker. He's younger than me. I think he's about 25, 26. But um, he's such a good kid, and I've had him on right from the start, right from when he turned pro, um, and when he took uh, second at the Romania Pro back in God, was it 2019 or 2020? And um, he's just a really, really lovely kid, really humble kid. Always made himself available from MD Glumnuthel and his uh, his old pal Tiger, and I really appreciate it. So I really, you know, he's very, um, very respectful kid. I like him. He's Ukrainian. And um, he's just a badass, as you can. Well, look at his physique; he's incredible. And he's just—he's just an absolute monster in the gym. I mean, you know. So I'm really happy to see him working with Dennis Wolf there. So let's see what that brings. Um, I'm predicting he's going to do Spain. I think he's going to be. Thing is, that's going to be interesting with him and Crizo. Mm. I think Crizo. I think Crizo a little bit ahead of the game now. I don't know. I, I need to see more of Crizo. Yeah, I think I it's going to. I think I'd, I, I'm looking forward to seeing if Vlad is doing Spain, the M Pro Classic, which Vlad. Um, which which Crizo is doing, I would like to see them next to each other in a call out, and I'm sure it will happen because I think they're of a very very similar level. But um, you know, Vlad, I tell you, keep keep an eye on this guy. I've been I've been hyping this guy for a couple of years. Wrote a nice feature mm -hmm. about him in MD, and um, uh, about, was it a year or two ago? And uh, very 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 uh, good athlete, very hard worker, and definitely on the up. So okay, let's look at one more picture, and then we will wrap it in. Um, anything else? Anything else interesting on here? Um, anything else? Uh, oh, this guy caught my eye. It's two twelve. Look at his chest and back. Well, look at look at the fullness in this guy's chest. Look at this. This is Edward Carb Carb Cargbo. Two weeks to Shuru Classic India. He's going to be the next big thing. Small waist, big arms, nice. and the separations. Watch out for his two twelve pro debut. That's stunning. He's got that. He's got. Wow. Look at that. It's nice, isn't it? That's stunning. It's nice. Look at his chest. God, I wish I had a chest like that. Well, not just the chest, but this is what I mean about the waist and the... That's, yeah. My gosh, that's See, lovely. if you had a thick waist, the whole picture would be spoiled, wouldn't it? Yes. But, um, yeah, I think he'd be a good open guy. I don't know. I, 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 how tall do you think he is? Maybe six foot. Baby's a 212. Mm, okay, fine. I don't know how tall that is. You don't is. get two, 212. Five, the, the, the tallest 212s are like 5'8", five, 5'7". Eight, five, five, seven. Eight. Five, he looks taller yeah. than... I, I think he's about 5'7", five, 5'8". I think he's about five eight because otherwise he's going to be he ain't going to have that kind of muscle if he's if he's taller than that. No, he's stunning for, for a two stunning. twelve. Yeah, looks good, nice shape. Yeah, good luck. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he does at the Shuru Classic. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what? I wanted to see his butt. Tut. His butt. You want to see his butt? <laughs> well, I wanted Lauren. to see him like do that thing with Lauren Lotta. Lauren Lotta, you are a disgraceful woman. It's been a while since <laughs> I've been on here, so. <laughs> <laughs> so why? He's just doing it to look at the men's butts, is it? No, but I like to see all but, compulsory but, 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 poses. But, yeah, enough enough of your butts. Right, okay then. Uh, okay, cool. Um, well, I want to uh, judge one day. I've got to see all the poses. Here we are, Jason Lowe. Uh, what did he place? I think it was eighth or ninth. I mean, this is a guy that went from men's physique to... 
No, we went from classic to 212 to open. So, and he's growing nicely as well. So, um, he's looking, yeah, he's yeah, really, nice, he's nice really side. put the size on. Um, the, uh, Ron Harris was watching the live stream and he said that the, um, his condition was very, very good as well. Um, so, nice. yeah, looks, he does look good, doesn't he? He does look really good. Really good. Let me check the time. Right, okay, I think we better get our asses to the gym because I need to get some beefy shoulders and um, work my butt by the sounds of it. <laughs> and. <No>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lauren, you walked into that one, love. No. Yes. Right, okay then. Uh, okay, yeah, I think nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Uh, right, okay, that's it, okay. Right, okay, then, like I said, I do apologise for just having a one guest episode of MD Global Muscle. Um, it won't happen again. And um, also, check out the latest issue of MD with Blessing on the cover. Congratulations to Blessing too. Why? Because he's having a baby. Oh, is he? Is he pregnant? Oh, his girlfriend, right, okay. Oh, okay. And he's on the cover, so congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second, second MD cover. That's a, I don't know how he's done that. Second two covers. That obviously shows you how popular it is. Mm -hmm. That's like, I mean, Chris Bumstead's had two covers now, I think. So, you know, that's getting one cover is, is quite amazing. But if you get two in the space of a couple of years, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I think Nick Walker's had a couple as well. Yeah. Yeah, but um, cool. All right, then, guys. Um, I should really have notes. Like, <laughs> share, Laura, subscribe. Laura, that's how I always end it. Right, okay then, guys. And also, as always, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And that is it, my friends. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting with Lauren Lotta in the house. We are out. <laughs>